So today uh, I'm going to uh, outline to you our application portfolio problem. The, and then in terms of the solution to that, uh, the principles that we've developed, some of the principles we've developed for using Abacus, our meta model, then take you through uh, two key artifacts that we use for application portfolio management being the application portfolio model and the technology as a roadmap followed by questions. But as Mark says, if you've got some burning questions, uh, as I go through, so I'll call them out and I'll, I'll address them. But first, uh, just a bit about Suncor. So Mark mentions a financial services group operates in Australia, New Zealand, across insurance and banking in the Australian market. We're sort of one of the top two. Uh, we're also a second tier bank and we're very, I can't remember our market domination in New Zealand, but it's pretty high. So if you're uh, an Australian, you recognize these brands as a really mainstream brands here. And that's that image there. So I guess for our international uh, guests, uh, Australia is a bit of a place of fire and flood. Here's a fire. And obviously our business, our core business in insurance is ensuring risks like these, making sure that we have a prompt and efficient claim service and so on. So that's Suncor. In terms of our application portfolio, we've got, we have a large portfolio of IT systems. We in uh, Abacus, we term that application portfolio. We use Archimate as our uh, architecture modeling language. And for those who are familiar with uh, Archimate will know there's applications, application services, system software, technology services. So the superset of that we call application portfolio. In fact, how we've implemented that in Abacus is a super type. So it's a super type for application component super type application service and so on. So this is, uh, this is actually reasonably recent data. We, uh, as you see, that's in terms of the count, it's quite large, so 1837. We extensive use ServiceNow at Suncor. Uh, CNDB, of course, is a core of, uh, of ServiceNow. And our current state is mastered in ServiceNow. So it's, it's a, a strong expectation at Suncor that every asset every IT system is in service now. Now it's not to say, I'm sure there's some out there that aren't, but that's our expectation. And a lot of information obviously is mastered in the CNDB. And then we sync that from ServiceNow into Abacus using the Abacus sync module. There are some attributes that aren't mastered in the, in the CNDB. And chief amongst those, I guess are relevant to this uh, discussion today, is life cycle stage and recommendation. So we've got a fairly classic uh, uh, life cycle in the sense of uh, an IT system could start off as emerging, move to core, core is your sort of like full on production. After a while, we say, okay, we're gonna sort of contain, no, we wanna limit the usage of or extra additional use of that system that moves into a intermediate phase of retiring. It's in the process of being retired and then finally actually does get retired. You see here that since we, uh, we've had Abacus, we've, uh, we've actually uh, retired, actually quite a reasonable proportion of our systems have been have become retired. There's a couple, a couple of future stagings here, future and not implemented, which I'll take you through later on. We also have a life cycle recommendation, which is an architecture recommendation of what we should do to these systems. And we've got uh, three days, so uh, basically we think they should be retired, they should be uplifted or just sustained, just kept on ticking along. So our problem is we've got a large application portfolio, how to manage that, uh, how to ensure that IT asset risks are addressed. That's a, uh, a big part of our obligation for or a variety of reasons, not least that our, our regulator uh, mandates that and chiefly how to inform funding decisions that are made by business stakeholders. So they need good information so they can make good business decisions. We had some constraints in achieving that as a solution. Uh, clearly we wanted to use Abacus. We, uh, we want to model 
current state and target state into one Abacus architecture. And I appreciate that Abacus, you can use evolved architectures and such like, but given our, our complexity, we didn't think that it would work for us. So we wanted an environment that we can do current state and target state in the one Abacus architecture. It has to support our federated architecture model. Uh, so I call as a, as a large uh, IT shop, have lots of different architecture domains, banking, insurance, then all the platform type stuff of you know, identity, customer, and so on. Uh, it has to be a model that uh, we don't have like one you know, mega architecture area, so it's federated out to our areas. So it has to support that. We very much wanted it to be any solution to be automated and self-service. So do you want to have a, a choke point where one person or whatever, one team produces these artifacts? And lastly, it must provide presentation quality artifacts. It, that, that was a key because back to that early point about uh, business stakeholders, it has to be something that uh, business stakeholders uh, can uh, readily consume. And there's a certain amount that looks good, it, it should, the content should be, uh, it's implied that the content is good as well. So a bit of, I guess, selling in there as well. I mentioned at the outset of the agenda, we have a set of uh, principles for use of ACUS. This is not the complete set, but these are the ones that were of relevance to this. And that is, the first one was that uh, uh, we want to attain data from the source of truth. So I already mentioned uh, that we're using, so uh, most of the data is coming from the ServiceNow CMDB and you know, we automate that sort of stuff. And other rationales of that is that, uh, that maintaining a source of truth is a lot of work. So it's better rather than if, if uh, we maintain things in Abacus, then there's quite a, a significant load to keep it up to date. So if, if other areas for other reasons are uh, ensuring that it's accurate, we'll take advantage of that. Next point is create data at the atomic levels is a very key thing for us. There's a lot of times where uh, the, from a viewpoint perspective, you want an aggregation and things like that. It can be tempting to create values at the aggregation because it's been very simple to, to show that, but that does uh, introduce data mates issues. You effectively denormalized. So you've still got the data possibly at two different levels and make sure you have to update both. It also, uh, can uh, constrain you of, of when you want to put in additional viewpoints, you have to sort of re-enter that data and things like that. So we, uh, we attempt to create data at the atomic level, and then we use automated techniques to drive aggregation. Now, I'm sure you guys are familiar with uh, scripting and so on, because we use a lot of scripting to uh, iterate through our atomic data, create the aggregations we need for various viewpoints. Next one was consistency. Uh, we come back to consistent with having a, a high presentation uh, artifact. It has to be consistent, has to uh, use the same terminology, colors, symbols. So when our stakeholders see different viewpoints of the same underlying data, the terminology is the same, the colors are the same and things like that. The last one of relevance for this is uh, minimizing handcrafting. So, uh, we, as much as possible, we wanted to automate this sort of thing. And you can see that's what we've achieved. Just uh, give you an outline of the metabolic, which, which are relevant later on, you see uh, how we've implemented these artifacts. So uh, we've used Archimate, as I've already indicated. This is the uh, meta model from an application-centric perspective, uh, application component. That's a pretty key uh, things that are of relevance. We have a concept of an architecture domain. So an example of an architecture domain would be bank, data, identity, and things like that. We have a concept that for every of our systems, there's one, one only accountable architecture domain. So from that, they say this area is accountable. And then so there, accountable means in this context, they're responsible for the life cycle and things like that. But we could have multiple interested domains for a given application. We have a concept of one and one only owner of a technology asset, or IT asset, that comes from the scene to be this relationship. We also model in Abacus the functions there. Function in some core terms is uh, an operating, or basically a, 
a line of business, so bank, New Zealand, corporate, things like that, or risk and legal and so on. So you can say, and obviously you can have a given piece of software, say, uh, yeah, say our payroll system, conceptually serves lots of different areas and things like that. So that's the service relationship. We have a capability model, which I'll take you through. So we have, uh, so a given uh, application can uh, be realized by, uh, assist to realize multiple capabilities. Obviously uh, connections and so on to other other types of software and things like that. The other thing which possibly is a bit novel is we also have modeled the products that we go to market with. And we, uh, so we can say for a given uh, product, the, the, the systems that, that service that product, so it's if you, and equally the channels through uh, that product is, uh, is sold and uh, and brands are uh, products are uh, I'm not showing this model here, but the products are associated with brands as well. So we can see what uh, for a given brand, what uh, what systems support that brand, things like that, which is obviously very useful for uh, impact analysis. So, yeah, what, what if we want to change a, a product? What are the effective systems and things like that? Just looking at a question here. Yeah, so that's, question, that's a good question for Michael. At what level would we go? Do we go to things like SQL Server or do the child level components? No, uh, we don't. Uh, that when I showed before that uh, number of uh, 1800 odd um, in application portfolio, that is what we would sort of deem to be uh, an IT system or a piece of IT soft system soft or software. We actually have a lot more than that in our CNDB. We have basically, as you know, a CNDB is basically full of configuration items. So it's, it's quite common these days to have components of a system uh, to be, could be accepted, uh, rolled out to production, instance raids and things like that. So multiple CIs. So we've done a lot of work to classify our system and, sort of, and come up with a concept of a, a system uh, a definition of a system, but we've done that for application, system software, and things like that, as much as possible in a term that, I, again, our sort of business stakeholders understand. Like when you, when you think about it, that uh, the RTO, things like concept like RTO and RPO are generally applied to the, the thing that's ultimately providing the business service, or I'm just talking an application concept here. So, no. So we, this is not every little piece of, piece of uh, software out there. That's a whole lot of, of a talk telling you about how we, we did that and the ongoing discussions of what defines a system and things like that, which is quite complex these days, particularly in the microservice world is it can be very hard to identify what is the system. Then just let's talk a bit more about, uh, I, mean, I said I would talk about how we model target state in the one architecture. This is a work in progress, uh, by the way. We're, so we're not, we're just fairly early days on that. So I mentioned that uh, our current stage, value, sort of current life cycle phase are the emerging core and so on. We introduced a couple of new ones, future not implemented. Here's a, a worked example. We have uh, System X on prem. We, we, we hope to, to Get rid of it in uh, March 2025. It's core to our business. Uh, it's, it's it's in contained though. It's been in contained for a little while, so we're on the hunt looking for a replacement for it. Two prospects: System X Cloud, to just the same system, but now move it to on the cloud, and System Y, and that, they're marked as sort of future. So that's why we're at the evaluation stage. We, we eventually make a decision. We decide we're going to go with System X Cloud. It's still sitting as a stage of future. Now, system wise, changed from a stage of future to not implemented. Now, we, ultimately, we may act back to physically delete that from the, the model. And now we, we've got a, a, a forward date here. So we expect in uh, February 2023, it'll become core. But uh, we're clearly going to have some form of power run here because we have introduced this connection here, replaced by a connection, saying on the 11th of 2022, System X on prem is going to be replaced by System X cloud. So it's sort of implied here some sort of power run is going to go on. And then, and then eventually, once the power run is sort of in place, we'll cut over to System X being cloud. So that's just a, a, 
worked example of how we expect to use stage for the model future stuff. Sorry, Andrew, we've just got two new questions coming up. Okay, first one is, do you mean, so architecture domains, so give an example of architecture domain, I, I said before, so uh, bank is one of our architecture domains. So a banking system, uh, so we have to be association or a, a accountable connection from uh, a system from a, a, a given banking system to the bank accountable domain one on one only but say our insurance bit say it's a it's a uh, our credit card gateway would be a good example credit card gate a credit card gateway is uh, a bank asset uh, so they're accountable for it but our insurance business use that credit card uh, gateway so they could be interested in that Next question from Michael was, yeah, current to state program. Yes, this is all within the one uh, architecture. I mean, I'm going to use architecture, I meant, I meant the advocates concept of an architecture. I hope that answered the question. But if not, let's come back to me. So in terms of the artifacts that we, uh, we, we built to, to help to assist us with our portfolio management problem, there's two. The, there's the application portfolio model, and that's where we uh, map uh, the application portfolio, the lifecycle -like information of the application portfolio onto our capability model. The next one is the technology asset roadmap, which is uh, again a set of application portfolio items, again showing current state. But this, but I guess the difference is it shows it's not it doesn't use a capability model as its canvas. It shows platform defenses and it shows a timeline. That'll become more obvious when I show you what it looks like. So this is an example, a real example of one of our application portfolio models. This is for our New Zealand business. Uh, it's just really just to give you a, sort of a, a flavor for you know, how many systems we have that support the New Zealand business. Some of them are red and uh, you see what red means. Red means uh, we're in the process of retiring those. Green means uh, core and things like that. So, and when you, I'll give an example of our capability model pretty soon, but uh, uh, you'll sort of get a, a feel for the sort, of the sort of the capabilities that we have. But the tent of this one is again, uh, that people, because we're using the capability model, hoping that's uh, something that's readily comprehensible by business stakeholders. They say, oh yes, for a given capability, these are the apps that are doing it. Some are a good state, some are not a good, good state. And that obviously can inform discussions. What should we do to go to address that? So it's it's uh, generated by a script. This is what the, the, the UI for the script looks like. You can uh, you can choose multiple architectures. But again, remember we said we're modeling current state and target state in one architecture, which we call production. But you know, we have, obviously have we do have multiple architectures as as some call mainly as sand pits, as sort of play areas and things like that. Uh, Sort of, I won't go into the detail of what these exact parameters mean, but basically you can have filters, the depth you go. So remember we had a, a KP model is a hierarchy model. So we just said we're only going to go three deep, but we can make that a large or small if you want to and so on. And if you sort of do that, and then uh, it comes up with uh, a set of uh, selection criteria. And we mentioned maybe you hark back to our metal model, we had a concept of a function surfboard. So here's an example of function. So these are our sort of functions we have at Suncor, you know, fi classic finance advice, one of the corporate ones, insurance and such like. And we have a couple of partners as well. So, uh, so joint ventures and things like that. You can also select by architecture domain, the owner, and this product, be, what we call the collective for our sort of product suite, if you like, we call product offering. So you can choose, basically uh, one of the, or actually as you go through, you can, at the same time, you can create multiple diagrams and then it will create a diagram for each of the selected criteria. Now I mentioned that we use KB model. So this is not a presentation going through our, our KB model as such, but this is just to get a, a flavor of what it looks like. It's a, has, a, it's a little bit different, it has a channel along the top. One of the things we're probably gonna add is a, a value chain as well. And then a third class, this is based largely on BIN, B I N. Uh, so, pretty classic sales and service, operations, business support, and a couple of ancillary sort of stuff. 
So here's, a, here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, this is sort of a, a, as you see, a complete mock-up. So no some called proprietary stuff here. And so if you work through this, we, uh, from the top, we have uh, this peripheral system one, which uh, can be used for, uh, as in terms of a, of a distribution, it can be for a channel, can be used for a mobile customer perspective, it can also be used for web. So it's pretty, I don't know how they actually do that because you know, one's, one's mobile on one's an app, one's on a web, so that probably is not quite true. Uh, we also have peripheral system four, which is a uh, country which is used for a contact center. And these uh, colors mean something. So you remember we've gone through the, the life cycle. So triple system one is core. And we've got here this indicator that uh, up arrow means we, we intend to uplift it. We, we tend to make it better. Whereas triple system four, we've got it's contained and we ultimately want to retire, retire that. Now, a application can satisfy multiple channels and multiple capabilities. So you see here that uh, uh, this, that's your example at uh, system B down here, which uh, we, in the, we're in the process of retiring. Uh, it supports policy change management, also supports policy renewal management. Just where system A, which is emerging, so we're, we're trying out, it's, it's got a bullet one, it's going up lift, and it supports policy issuance and so on. Moving down to the lower end of the stack, business support we have some you know, workflow apps again filenet here it supports uh, workflow and it supports uh, what, we, what we call the document library and so on and then over the right hand side uh, classic infrastructure sort of stuff for you know, databases and uh, operating systems and things like that so you'll see that when you uh, 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 based on the selection you make the, the heading comes, you know, shows you that basically the session criteria, you know, the date it was generated and things like that. So I remember also I showed before that uh, we, the default level was three. So so, we, so that's sort of, you know, that's level zero, that's level one, that's level two, that's level three. Actually in our capability model, for some areas there's level four ones. So if I had, had chosen level four, it would go down at level, but conversely, if I had chosen level two, it would these all these things here, the policy issue and so on, would roll up to policy life cycle management. So it recursively goes through the the tree, the capability tree, which I tell you is pretty complex to do. Get your head in trying to do it in the script and test that sort of stuff, but it does work. Any uh, actually, I've got a question for Michael. So all these, so so Michael, all the, these diagrams are auto-generated. None of them are, ha are hand-generated, and we we don't need to do any cleanup for connections. So we don't actually the, the diagrams, the models don't, they don't create any connections. They're just using existing connections. Any questions about that so far? Now, we most of this is using annotations and things like that. So, this, so to, just to get this, uh, one of the issues uh, you, you can have with uh, annotations, because you can get very busy. You can, uh, we try to minimize extraneous text type annotations. That's why we didn't put a little thing saying core, or, you know, retiring, things like that. We use colors to do that. Uh, we, we have a concept of some called basically is an app critical or not critical. And so that's sort of do that by bolding their shadows. So they say system B is, is one of those. We, so just basically to save real estate, we, instead of putting the recommendation up to sustain as a as text, we wanted to use an icon for that. And how we actually implemented that, that actually is a wingdings, one of the wingdings fonts. So we wrote a, basically a derivation that uh, turns uplift into whatever the wingding font is for up arrow and, and put it as, a, as a, a derived property against that. So then we can use it directly in, in an annotation. We, 
we do we we're open, I guess, for, for uh, other possibly adding extra data. This balance here between uh, putting too much data on something and making it too too busy and hard to comprehend, things like that. So that seemed to work fairly well for us. So any questions on, on the application portfolio model? Let's see, there's appears to be something in the chat. Let's see what that says. How many, says Glenn. That's a Dorothy Dixon from Glenn there. Lots. <laughs> we have reduced, uh, we have, so uh, it's not a thousand, Glenn, you know that, uh, but uh, it, it is it's certainly more than 10 and less than 100. Okay, I'll move on then. So next one was the, we use the technology asset roadmap. So we have a, I mean, we're regulated in, in Australia by APRA, Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority, I think. Uh, so they have a, a Prudential standard called CPS 234, which applies to or to everyone that they're, that they're who they regulate, and so this is a quote here that uh, they have. Uh, it's a requirement that we have a, a clear view of the sustainability of that. When, when they use the word asset, they sort of mean IT asset which, you know, equals our systems. Uh, so basically, that we've got to make sure that we are uh, continually ensuring that uh, those, those assets are reliable and securely meet the business purpose and. And basically, risk and obviously the ultimate aim of APRA is to make sure that there is a that banking and financial and banking insurance services are reliably made within Australia. So there's a uh, we have to we get audited and all that sort of stuff by APRA. So it's a quite strong uh, requirement to do that. So we we have a, a standard which uh, sorry internal standard that sort of sort of mandated the sort of uh, information that is needed to ultimately support that. And this roadmap I'm about to show you is a, I guess, instantiation of the information required by that internal standard, which in turn supports the APRA, APRA Prudential standard. So it's a set of uh, application portfolio items. Remember application portfolio is, is a sort of set of IT systems. Now, technically speaking, uh, what, Asset in the APRA concept is more than just software, it covers hardware as well, but I'll come to that as a future item. But, so this shows the current state assessment, very similar to what you've already seen, but it also shows uh, platform dependencies and a future life cycle. It's more orientated uh, at our service owners, and service owners is in, I guess, uh, ServiceNow talk, it, uh, the, the person who's, the IT person who's responsible for the roadmap of a given system. So it's again, uh, script driven. You can, it's uh, it's timeline based. So you, so that's why that, and we, we use financial years. Uh, so you can say, you can say what year you want to start, number years and things like that. So similarly to the application portfolio model, it uh, you can filter by various, uh, uh, attributes, a, a subset of what you can for the application portfolio model, but uh, again, the, the domain, the, the owner, who's it serves, and a new concept will be created just for this, which we call the te technology asset, asset the roadmap profile. And this is actually a, just an arbitrary set of techno technology assets. One of the, when you see the example, one of the driving principles we had is that we wanted the ultimate roadmap to be uh, produced by this to an A3 and an A3 that you can read and so you can't have too many rows on A3 so if, and the rationale of that is you, if you've got too many rows then you really should in some sense petition what you're showing so in some cases well, if you just choose by say own or function serve by you're going to get way too many rows so we thought we're going to have to have some set way of doing that. So how we've done that, we've, we've created a couple of new connections. Uh, so, so this is just like a system member connection. 
is this an RB set here that you connect and, and this system member depended upon. I'll show you what they mean later on. The advantage of doing it this way, we, we went through a whole heap of iterations of what we should best way to do this, but clearly you can go into Abacus and use the standard uh, right click, you know, connect, uh, delete, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you use the interface of um, Abacus to, to build this list. So we expect in practice the people who are preparing these roadmaps or have their sort of standard uh, set that I do, uh, possibly clone it and trade out for ones and things like that. But if you press the button, that's what it looks like. Uh, we, we did a lot of work to, uh, in terms of colors and layout uh, to uh, Jalal would have a test of that to uh, get it just right. We're, this is actually uh, just off the box. So Jalal just gave me a latest version, as you can see here, just before 10 o'clock today. Let's go through it. Uh, so timeline, so FY timeline, where we said start FY21 for four years. Uh, a list of systems uh, that that we want to do. We have a, uh, we break down uh, sort of this, what's that called, key systems and systems. So we have a, a concept of some call of this business Krugel, yes or no. It's also what we call information asset type, fundamental, essential. So basically if something is fundamental, essential or Krugel, it's pretty important to us, equals key. Uh, if it isn't, it's, it's still important, but not as important. So it goes in this list here. And then, so I guess the primary use of this roadmap is for these two sections, the key systems and the systems. But remember I said that, that one of the things we have to show, particularly in a, you know, after risk sort of stuff is you may have this you know, really great peripheral system one may be fantastic, but it depends on say the Oracle database, um, perhaps the Oracle database is, go, is about to go out of support and things like that, which means in terms that it's not, uh, this system here isn't all that great really because of that dependency. So we need to, that's a, a real problem for us to show that sort of dependency. So that's why we've got that. So I, I just completely made up data. So I, so I just, the system, you would recognize the same color scheme here. Uh, as you see the application portfolio model. So it just means it's emerging. Red means it's reti retiring, green it's cool and so on. Uh, just sort of a narrative, uh, which comes from the CMDB description for the system. And then uh, uh, the, see, see here is life cycle assessment. Again, you would have seen that uh, on the, so the emerging, the, the, it's, it's maybe slightly hard to read, but this is the, uh, it's been uplift. Uh, this is critical as information. We also have a, a data classification this one is custom HR data. And these two new things, which wasn't shown before, we have a in service now, we do periodic uh, health assessments using a set of service now questionnaires, which we culminate in uh, business health and technical health. So here's the, the score, it's one's 8.2 out of 10. It's one 7.6 out of 10. We have a, a range concept. So we, we break it down into basically red, green, or yellow depending on the, the banding, if you like. So obviously, if you did look, at, you're looking at this one here, it's sort of, uh, it's, like, it's actually business health, it's okay, 6.5, but sorry, technical health is uh, pretty good. Six, it's all oh, okay, 6.5, that's got poor business health. So it's the sort of thing that you uh, draw attention to. So this life cycle data, and then you can put an arbitrary comment at the end. But the key thing here is the, the timeline. So this is showing for system A, it's emerging, and then it became core. There's a, a life cycle, a transition here, a core. Uh, system B, which has been core. And then there's a, a, a this, this, on this day, it's, there's, it's basically, this is a replaced event. So system B was replaced by system A on this day. Uh, then system B stayed core for a bit longer. So, um, some sort of parallel run is implied. And then we went into a retiring phase that took a little while. And then we finally retired it on this date here. System C, similar sort of timeline, but it just, nothing's replacing it. So similar concept here, the same sort of thing that uh, uh, peripheral system two 
was replaced by thrift system one and things like that. The, and I guess it's just other examples here of the same sort of thing. The, I guess the key for this is that this is all data driven. This is the data that was used to generate that. In terms of, and most of this data, in fact, comes from the CNDB. So in terms of the work that uh, somebody who wants to create these needs to do, they need to basically enter these dates, make sure that these, these dates are correct, uh, review the recommendation, update the stage if necessary, which is already part of our current process to, to, do, to update these two fields, but these fields we haven't been pushing people to do. So they need to uh, make those uh, accurate. Uh, if there's replacement events, put that, uh, that connection in and the date and we'll update the comment as, re as relevant. So the, the intent behind this is that you enter these dates and really uh, once you do it the first time, it's just a matter of, you know, things don't change that much. It's just really a matter of tweaking the dates and things like that. Now we expect there's gonna be a fair bit of, oh, I'm not too sure when we think we want to retire this system, anything like that. But that's the whole point of, the, of provoking discussion. You should be thinking of those sort of things. You should have a forward expectation of what you could do with your assets. This will prompt you to do that. Having done that, it's just a matter of, if you saw back of the script, pressing the button, and the diagram comes out, which and since because it's a uh, Avis diagram, we can embed it in uh, enterprise. We can export it, all that sort of stuff. And you see, we, uh, from this from the presentation of it, let's go back up. It's yeah, it's it's ready it's ready to roll. You just export that. You give, you should better give that to your business stakeholders, the people who are making decisions. That's a couple more questions, it looks like, in the chat. How do you use Apple's on Mac OS? Okay, I'll leave Evolution to reply to that one. Um, well, Abacus, other than Abacus, is browser-based. So, uh, well, uh, Abacus Studio isn't, though, but, but, uh, but Enterprise is browser-based, so it's, it's available. Okay. Oh, yeah, so it's not going to answer that one. No, so yes, so no, well, what you call release uh, support and retirement dates, Michael, that is uh, currently maintained manually. Uh, but I will show you uh, some future work we're doing, which will be, make it slightly different. But but the, let's go back to the data, down to, oops, one, down to the data, this sort of, Remember, these are life cycle transition dates here. So when you think things can become containment trying. So there's no uh, uh, master other than Abix for this. And largely that's, you know, the, to come up with those dates is a process of people who are responsible assets doing some forward planning and basically putting the data in. So just, oops. So yeah, so uh, in terms of work in progress, we have things that we uh, enhance as we uh, tended to do to this. We want to bring in for COTS products that we have to bring in uh, the vendor support end date, extended support date. We we, we have the Flexera at Suncor just re uh, recently implemented. I uh, tell you recently, <clears throat> it's being, it's in the process of being integrated with ServiceNow. <coughs> Once that's done, uh, we can bring that in and the intent would be having, I also uh, we hope to get license renewal date and then we would have additional icons we could show. So say, I'll take a, you know, the Oracle database example here. I thought that could be an icon that says you know, around here Oracle goes into life or things like that. So that information is sending you relevant facts. License renewal date is a bit tricky because tricky for things like uh, say SASs where you say have a periodic uh, you know, annual review or things like that. We want to show that sort of stuff. Uh, we also uh, want to show uh, work packages that affect the roadmap. So I guess I'll go back again. 
So here's this one here where you know, system B is replaced by system A, but there's so there's no sort of narrative, there's sort of no context behind that. Uh, so we thought if we create a work package that has a similar date and some connection, you could, just, you could just would say is you know, the work package would be something like uh, you know, parallel run starts for system A. Uh, this work package here could be uh, retire, things like that. And the other rationale for that is uh, but the intent of this is to provoke discussion, to look to say, well, uh, things that aren't in a good state, what are you going to do about it? Uh, generally speaking, the doing about it is ultimately some sort of project equals work package in Archimate terms. And if you put that connection there, and then if that work package uh, happens, that's fantastic. But if it doesn't, and I think we all know that uh, that most cases, most projects don't get up, projects get uh, terminated, projects get delayed. So we could then do a impact analysis of, well, we made an assumption here that this work package is going to sort out uh, system A and mean we can uh, retire system B. And as we put it here, that work package is now marked as not, to, not going to proceed. So the risk is still there. What are we going to do about it? And things like that. So that's a very important extension. The other one, which is just really a thought bubble, is uh, the techno from our perspective, the, the technology asset applies to all technology assets, not just software. So this, today, this has been very software centric. Uh, can it uh, uh, support hardware as well? Conceptually, it can. The uh, our biggest issue with that is we would need to have uh, appropriate hardware data in Abacus. Uh, for to have the appropriate hardware and data and advocates, given we said that current state is the CNDB, would have to be good quality data in the CNDB, which it currently is not. That's it for the presentation. Let's move into general questions. How did you manage model technology assets such as future applications that don't ex yet exist in your roadmap planning? Well, uh, we load those directly into advocates. So, uh, the CMDB is current state and current state only. You expect system X on-prem will be in CMDB because it's live, it's core, but system X cloud and system Y, uh, they will be uh, future ones. We would have to uh, flip them to appear in, on these sort of diagrams. They would have to be manually entered into Abacus. Now, that, we don't see that as a big imposition. It's not like we've got hundreds and hundreds of maybe what could happen in the future type systems out there. So it's, it's really, that's manageable. Next question, uh, the value, the, what value does your business get out of the roadmaps? Well, uh, that's, it's hard to assess <laughs> uh, that. We, we would like to think they are valuable uh, in terms of getting direct feedback. This is fantastic. We have had uh, some of our, uh, this one of our key uh, deputy general managers, uh, really new to organization, but basically in charge of our insurance technology, uh, say this is fantastic, which is a fantastic validation. Michael, you're asking uh, how large is the EA team? So the current EA team is uh, was eight of us, but remember when you say responsible for creating and maintaining APMs, that, that's not the point. So so the APM, much the same thing as the, where are we, APM. That's how you create, that's how you create an APM. So uh, anyone with Abacus Studio, and we have a 30 odd license for uh, Abacus Studio, anyone with Abacus Studio can do that. So I definitely do not you know, do that for them. So if, say one of the insurance guys wants to generate an APM for their business, go for it. Now, obviously we document how to do that. Uh, we support them if there's problems. I'm sort of the main liaison with uh, evolution and you know, scripting change. Although this one largely we've taken out, we have taken over uh, development of that. Yeah, so it's very consistent. We, we want self-service. We need to support our federated model. We do not want to be a check point. So, uh, Next one from Anonymous, how do business companies align with a technology asset roadmap? Well, it doesn't have, the technology asset roadmap doesn't have a capability. Actually, oh, sorry, I, excellent question. So I didn't, uh, I've got to talk about this one. Yes, so 
obliquely, I guess, is a is a, a glib answer. When when you're using this one, because it, it's uh, the technology asset roadmap profile, you've got complete control of the SIF, so we thought that's okay. But if I was, uh, say, doing it for, to say, our insurance business, where we have a lot of systems, we wanted some sub tool concept, and so you know, this, this is where this uh, code becomes up. So when you choose, say, insurance, it would come up with, it would iterate through, all, this is all the systems that, 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 that serves their insurance function. These are all the, the capabilities in turn that are realized by, by that set of systems. And then by default, they're all checked on, but just say, that, oh, actually, I just want to show uh, fraud detection. So you, you can unclick all the other ones, just click fraud detection, and then it would just show the fraud detection systems on that roadmap. So we thought that'd be a, a method to uh, get a, a reasonable number of <clears throat> systems on a, on a page, and we don't want a too busy a diagram. Other than that, the roadmap doesn't show the capabilities. That's that's something I probably should have put in the in a things to do type stuff. So we probably will show the capabilities. The problem we've got in terms of showing capabilities is because a system can realize multiple capabilities. How do you show that? And it could get pretty busy if you had a sort of like a whole list of capabilities here. Now, taking taking forward a bit more, one of the things that we are working on is the best way to prepare target state roadmaps. And we're highly likely to use a capability based approach where you would have your current capabilities with an assessment of your current capabilities. On the right hand side, have your target set capabilities where you want uh, the, the, the maturity and such like of your target uh, state maturities and some sort of timeline in the, in the middle achieves that. This is not that artifact. Uh, I think a lot of the learnings that we've done in terms of generating this would be applicable, the sort of data that we've needed to, to do is applicable, but that would be a third uh, artifact uh, and which we again would, uh, would very much would want to automate to produce a target state roadmap and that would definitely be uh, using capabilities. Okay, just to, I'll just go back to the model, just to reiterate that now, all this comes from this. Like, so if we didn't have uh, these connections between domain, we didn't have the connection between technology owner, between capability, function, things like that, if that data wasn't there, then we couldn't create those diagrams. So I guess one of the, uh, the other principles, uh, advocacy principles, which I didn't show, was that we should start from the viewpoint we want and then work back to the data we need to drive that, that, that viewpoint. So it's not just we decide, oh, let's, let's have product and brand and, and see what, if, it, if it comes in handy. We knew we wanted a viewpoint that would require that data. From the viewpoint, what is it, we say, okay, what is the best way to represent that data in a way that will satisfy that viewpoint, but is sort of generic as science. So it can be used for other purposes as well, which is back to that, uh, try and do things at an atomic level.